Hey guys, Expendables 3 is coming out in just a few days. Sly, Arnold, Dolph, Kelsey Grammer, for some reason. The gang is all back. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. We don't care about that movie at all. Let's talk about an Arnold movie franchise that is way better than The Expendables. Uh, not counting this. Or this. Here are seven things you didn't know about Terminator. Probably. James Cameron has money to burn nowadays. After all, he made the top grossing film of all time. Twice. But before directing 1984's The Terminator, he was a nobody in Hollywood. He'd been fired, rehired, then fired again off of Piranha 2, and then he got stuck in a holding pattern trying to get The Terminator made while Arnold Schwarzenegger was busy filming Conan 2. The conflict pushed him to force production from the summer of 1983 into the spring of 1984. In the meantime, Cameron was so broke that his car had been repossessed and he was surviving on coupons that his mom would mail him for buy one get one Big Macs. He'd eat one and then save the other to eat the next day, which is terrifying because the shelf life of a Big Mac is about 35 minutes. But he put the downtime to good use, storyboarding the entire movie himself, and he even did some color panels. Obviously, things turned around for him after Terminator's release, and we're guessing he hasn't eaten a day old Big Mac since. If he has, that's just really, really sad. Terminator 2 is one of those sequels where it's just so good you kind of feel a little guilty for maybe liking it more than the original. I mean, come on, just look at that gun flip. It's so cool! What you may not know is that they had to build a special gun with a larger lever on it so that Arnold could do that super cool gun flip. In fact, one day on set he picked up the wrong gun, tried to flip it over, and nearly broke three of his fingers in the process. And he needs those fingers for fondling his female staff, am I right? Yeah, you're totally right. No, I'm just kidding. Let's move on to the next thing. Explosions, and gunfights, and car chases, and twins! That's right, there are twins in Terminator 2, and there are actually two sets of them. Since the T-1000 is able to take on other characters' forms after touching them, in this scene where he turns himself into the security guard, they actually just cast twin brothers. It saved them the cost of doing special effects to achieve the same shot. The other twin we see in the film is actually Linda Hamilton's twin sister, Leslie. In the surgery scene, the reflection in the mirror is really Leslie, and they used a dummy head for Arnold here. Yeah, we had a hard time telling which one was the dummy Arnold, too. Hey, that's enough out of you! Okay, alright, we'll move on. Later on, when the T-1000 takes on Sarah's form, Linda's sister helped out again. Here we see Linda in the foreground with Leslie in the back. Then they switch to Linda in the background to continue the sequence. By the way, in this other scene where Sarah is playing with baby John Connor, that's actually Linda Hamilton with her real son, Dalton. Boom! Bonus thing you didn't know. Special effects are critical in Terminator, but you may not know that one important effect in T2 was digital wang removal for the T-1000's arrival scene. However, without even looking that closely, you can still see Robert Patrick's junk. I guess the company that James Cameron hired to erase that dong just didn't do a very good job. Too busy dicking around, probably, am I right? Dicking around? Eh, it's really his balls, but you get, you get the picture. Let's jump back to Terminator 1. Did you know that Linda Hamilton's ankle was broken during filming? She broke it shortly before production began, which is exactly what you don't want to do when you're playing a character who spends almost the entire movie running. The production had to shift the schedule around so that all the running scenes took place later on after she'd had a bit of time to heal. Once they got to those scenes, they still had to wrap it daily so that she could do the best she could running with the broken ankle and torn ligaments. Clearly, she's a freaking badass, which actually segues perfectly into our next thing. Not only did Linda Hamilton get into crazy good shape for T2, she took her role so seriously that in the scene where she's trying to break out of the mental institution, she refused to allow production to fake this shot of her picking the lock. She insisted on learning how to really do it, and she does successfully pick the locks and free herself for real in this scene. For the film's release in England, they actually wanted this scene cut from the film because they didn't want people to see a plausible method of picking locks demonstrated. Oh, sure, this is totally fine, but lockpicking? No, 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 completely inappropriate. I'll be back. The Terminator is arguably the most iconic role of Arnold Schwarzenegger's entire career. What most people don't know is the T-800 was originally envisioned as an everyman who could vanish in a crowd and hide in plain sight. You know, the exact opposite of a 6'2", 230-pound Austrian guy. In fact, Arnold was up for the role of Reese originally, However, Arnold wanted to play the Terminator from the very beginning. He felt that the bad guy was the cooler guy in the script. Luckily, after meeting James Cameron for lunch, they both knew that Arnold would make a great Terminator. 
Seven years later, when they were working on T2, Arnold was afraid to turn the T-800 into a good guy and didn't like the idea that his character wouldn't be killing people. So he negotiated with James Cameron and Terminator 2 co-writer Bill Wisher, who's right there holding the camera, by the way, that the Terminator would stop killing only after John Connor tells him to, and he'd still get to squeeze in some kills before that. The final script, which Cameron and Wisher had only seven weeks to write, convinced Arnold that turning the Terminator into a good guy would work. Yeah, we'd say that it turned out okay. Hasta la vista, baby. That's it for this time around, but there are a ton of other awesome Terminator things that we didn't have time for in this episode. So hit the thumbs up if you want us to do a part two. After all, there's another Terminator on the way next year. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out Cinefix.com and subscribe for more truish things about movies and sometimes respected character actor Robert Patrick's balls right here on Things You Didn't Know.